I entreated thy favor with my whole heart. Be merciful unto me according to thy word. I thought on my way to turn my feet unto thy testimony. I made haste and delayed not to keep thy commandments. The bands of the wicked have robbed me, but I have not forgotten thy law. At midnight I will rise to give thanks unto thee because of thy righteous judgments. I am a companion of all them that fear thee, and of them that keep thy precepts. The earth, O Lord, is full of thy mercy. Teach me thy statutes. You heard the 119th division of Psalm, verses 57 through 64. Let us pray. Lord, we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. We thank you once again, God, for allowing us, God, to be here in this moment at this time, to share thy word, to commune and fellowship, not only with the saints, God, but thy Holy Spirit. So by thy spirit, God, grant unto us tonight, God, thy wisdom, thy knowledge, thy power, thy understanding, God, thy counsel, God. Come on in, God, and have thine way in us, God. Uh, refresh us tonight, God, that thou impart thy word into our hearts. God, let it be written upon the tables of our hearts that we sin not against thee. We love you, Lord. We praise you. We do thank you for it all. In Jesus' name, we do pray this prayer. Amen. Amen. And amen. Once again, saints, God's evening to you. Um, it's with the honor and pleasure and a privilege that uh, we're able to be here tonight uh, to share with you the word of the Lord. Before we go on, I'm quite sure that if you um, tune in a little earlier, um, First Lady Benjamin Watson probably has things rolling on the screen, some announcements and so forth, so on. But uh, just to reiterate it, amen. Um, um, our own brother Phil Spot Home Going Service will be on Friday at 11 o'clock. Um, the viewing will be Thursday uh, from 6 to 8. Uh, we will try to give you some more information um, uh, sometime tomorrow if it's not by calling post or if it's something on the website that you can see. Um, but let's just keep the family uh, in prayer and lift it up the Phil Spot family and the Johnson family, uh, brother Johnson. Uh, Brother Steve Johnson and Sister LaShade Johnson on the uh, loss of his um, sister. Amen. So let's keep your families lifted up as we keep all the saints lifted up. Amen. To God be the glory. If you would, amen. Let's get back into the book of John. Amen. We even the 15th chapter of John. Amen. And no better way, amen, to go into the word of God because it keeps us just full of it. Amen. So, so that thing that keeps us just full of it is the word of God. And tonight, we find ourselves still in the book of John. We are in the 15th chapter of John. And we've made it to the 16th verse. And, and in these verses, <clears throat> amen, Jesus is talking to the disciples. And he's preparing the disciples for the fact that he has to go away. And he's preparing them by uh, teaching them and, and, and letting them know some things that he wants them to do. So last week, uh, he simply uh, brought to our attention about being in the vine, the vine being Christ Jesus and uh, 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 the wine keeper or the, or the husbandry would, would be God the Father. And, and Jesus was telling us last week simply as he talked to the disciples that we must stay in the vine in order to produce um, fruit. And, and as long as we're in the vine of Christ Jesus, we should be bang fruit, amen, because he's a fruit-bearing vine, amen, and as long as you continue to be the branch on the vine, you should be bearing fruit, amen, so this is what Jesus was giving the disciples um, last week, and he also touched on the fact that uh, uh, we should love one another, but uh, as he begins in this 16th verse, amen, Jesus has just told the disciples, amen, that now I call you friends, because of uh, 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 a, a, a servant, uh, a master doesn't necessarily uh, have to tell a servant anything. But Jesus had just told the disciples, I call you no more servant, but I call you friends because a friend will share with you. And, and now that Jesus has said that, he gets us to the 16th verse where he's continues, he continues to, to exalt and, and teach the disciples. In the 16th verse of the 15th chapter of John, Jesus says this, he said, ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit 
and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it, give it you. Uh, these things I command you, that ye love one another. Amen. In verse 16, you, he said, ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Jesus was letting the disciples know, hey, yeah, if, yeah you came to me, but, but you came to me because I chose you. Amen. And, and I chose you for a purpose. I chose you uh, um, for something um, new and fresh and exciting. And he said, I ordained you for this. Amen. I made you ministers um, to be able to do exactly what uh, I called you for. And that's the will of God. He goes on to tell them in that same verse, he said that you should go forth, go and bring forth fruit. Amen. We talked a little bit about the fruit last week. Amen. That your fruit should remain. So here Jesus is just uh, uh, exhorting the uh, disciples by telling them, hey, you know what? Yeah, I know I got to leave, but look at here. Uh, I ordained you for this time. I ordained you for this moment. And, and I, do, I ordained you to be fruit bearing um, branches. Amen. And he goes on, he said, so what, and what in the latter part of verse 16, he said that whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. Amen. Um, Jesus was encouraging the disciples saying, okay, you know, I'm not going to be here with you, but I'm going to send you the comforter. And, in, and with the comforter, you'll be able to, to ask some things in the Father's name and, and he'll grant it. I mean, ask him, the Father in my name and he'll grant it because he has given me this, this, this power, this authority. And Jesus goes on in the 17th verse, and he reiterates it again when he said, these things I command you, that ye love one another. Uh, Jesus was big on telling the disciples what? To love one another. He was big on telling the church to love one another. Amen. Uh, and, and we as the, the body of Christ, we got to do better with loving one another. It, 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 it's not something that's optional. It's, it's something that Jesus has commanded the church to do. Amen. Amen. Uh, to love one another. And we talked a little bit about the definition of love that comes from the book of 1 Corinthians. Amen. But Jesus goes on and he tells the disciples in the 18th verse of the 15th chapter of John. He said, if the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. So Jesus was trying to give them some expectations of some things that were going to happen after he, he, um, he departs. He said, look, he said, the world hated me. So I don't want you to think that it's not going to hate you because now who are you representing? You're going to be representing me. So, so if they hated me, you can expect the fact what? That they're going to hate you too. Amen. Amen. So, so, so Jesus was, was preparing them. He, he was um, exhorting them, encouraging them. But at the same time, he was letting them know that some things were what? about to happen when he departs. Amen. He goes on in the 19th verse, and he said, if you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hated you. Amen. Jesus, in other words, uh, um, as long as you're a part of the world, then the world will Go and accept you. He said, but look, he said, but I called you out of that. This is what he was telling the disciples. I called you out of that. I chose you. Amen. And he said, now that I've chosen you, amen, you're no longer of this world. He said, so this world going to hate you now. Amen. Oh, they, they're not going to want to have anything to do with you because they don't want to have anything to do with, with me. me. And, you know, so they're going to treat you uh, pretty much how they treated me. Mm. Amen. So, so Jesus was letting us, us know this. Amen. And, and if the truth be known, it hasn't changed, uh, saints. Amen. The, uh, uh, the world still doesn't like, uh, uh, glory, have mercy. Uh, 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 I say uh, there is still a substantial amount of the world that doesn't like Christ Jesus. Amen. amen. And, and because you represent him, amen, you need to stop getting messed up about people not liking you. Amen. Oh, Especially God. folks that are still in the world. Amen. They, they're not going to love you like Christ loved you. Amen. But but nevertheless, Jesus was here. Amen. And he was just uh, preparing, preparing the disciples for that to come. Amen. So Jesus gets here in the 15th chapter of the, uh, the 20th verse of the 15th chapter of John. 
And he tells them, he said, remember the word that I said unto you. Amen. He said, remember what I've taught you. Remember the word. He said, the servant is not greater than his Lord. Mm. If they persecuted me, they will also what? Persecute you. Mm. If they have kept my sayings, they will keep yours also. Mm. Amen. So Jesus is saying, hey, you know, uh, um, the servant is not a book, is not greater than his Lord. In other words, uh, you're not greater than Christ Jesus. Amen. Uh, uh, and so, therefore, the way they treated Christ Jesus, that's how they go treat you. They persecuted him, they go what? Persecute you. They talked about him, they go what? Talk about you. Amen. They lied on him, they go what? Lie on you. Oh, this, this is what the world, this is what Jesus said, this is what the world do. Amen. So, so don't get messed up about it. Don't, don't, uh, uh, let your what they say your your feathers get in a in a frenzy about it. He said, "This is what's going to happen simply because they did it to me, and as a representative of me, they gonna do it to you." Don't so, die. so he was preparing the disciples. Amen. Uh, he says in the latter part of the twentieth verse of chapter fifteen of the book of John, he said, "If they have kept my sayings, they will keep yours also." In other words, Jesus said, "If they have kept the things that I said to do." And you come back and you saying the same thing that I said, dude. If they kept them when I said it, they'll keep it when you say it. He said, but look, here, if, if they don't, then they not of me. Amen? He, he, so so that's just some things I don't want you to be messed up about. Amen? Uh, in the 21st verse, Jesus goes on. He said, but all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. Amen? Jesus said, they're going to do this to you because they don't know the Father. Mm -hmm. They don't know the one that, that sent me down here. Amen. And because they don't know him, all the things they do to you, and they're going to do them in my name because they just don't know the one that sent me. They don't have a relationship with the one that sent me. And and, and so Jesus is, is trying to, well, he, he, he's letting the disciples know these things. Amen. In verse 22 of the same book, he says, if I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin. Oh, watch this. He said in verse 22 of chapter 15 of the book of John, Jesus says to the disciples, he said, if I had not come and spoken unto them, they had they had not had sin. You know what Jesus said? If, if, in other words, they was all right and everything was all hunk of door. Jesus said, I wouldn't even have to come. He said, but because sin was in the camp, sin was there, and, and y'all needed a way of being uh, um, redeemed to the Father, he said, I had to come. He said, this is why I come. He said, but now, in verse 22, he said, but now they have no cloak for their sin. Jesus said, now that I've come and, and I've taught the word of God, I've preached the word of God, I did these miracles, and he said, now they have what? No cloak, no excuse, no pretense. Mm. For, for, for the sin. Amen. It, in other words, Jesus said that the, the sins have been called out. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm the reason why they've been called out, because I'm here. Amen. So, so he goes on. I like that when he said, but now they have no cloak for their sin. They have no excuse for their sin. Amen. Somebody simply say the light has been shown. Oh, Amen. God. Have yeah. mercy. And since the light has been shown, what? All sin is that exposed. Amen. So, so in verse 22, he said, If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not, they had not had sin. You know, if, if I hadn't come, then everything was, was all right. He said, But now that I'm here, he said, But now they have no cloak, no excuse, no pretense uh, for, uh, for their sin. Mm. Amen. In verse 23, he said, He that hated me hated my father. Also, amen. amen. So Jesus points everything still unto the Father. He said, if they hate me, they hate the Father. Because if they hate me, they hate the one that sent me. Amen. So so Jesus is continuously uh, uh, preparing the disciples. In verse number 24 of the 15th chapter of John, he says, if I had not done, if I had not done among them the works which none other man did, uh, they had not had seen. But now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. Mm -hmm. Amen. Jesus said, in other words, Jesus said, uh, 
it, it, it kind of goes along with verse number 22. When Jesus said, uh, uh, if I had not come and spoken to them, they had not had sin. In other words, if I didn't come, then that mean everything was all right. Yeah. Jesus, but I had to come because what sin, sin was, was running rampant. Amen. Amen. And, and, and y'all needed somebody to what? Redeem you back unto the Father. Jesus said, if, even in verse 24, he said, if I had not done among them the works which none other man did, uh, they had not had sin. Jesus said, if, if if everything was all right, he said, I wouldn't have had to come and did the things that I've done. The, uh, some of the works that I did, nobody else has ever done them on earth. Amen. He, he, saw, he said, all those things that I did, and he said, I didn't do them uh, just to be doing them. He said, I did them because what? Sin was running rampant. Amen. And so he goes on. He said in the latter part of verse 24, but now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. Amen. In other words, he said, uh, even the things that I've done, they still hate me. Mm. And so they hate me, they still what? Hate the father. You you can't say you love me and not know the father. You can't say you love me and you hate the father. It, it doesn't work like that. Jesus said, if, if you hate me, you hate, hate the, the father. father. If you love me, you love the father. Why? Because I and the father are one. The father sent me. Amen. And, and that's who's authority I come in. Oh God. In verse number 25 of the 15th chapter of John, he goes on, he said, but this cometh to pass that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. Oh God. They hated me without oh a cause. Amen. But this cometh to pass that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. So, so Jesus said, I just don't want you to be caught off guard. The things that are, are coming, the things that are, are happening, they, they've already uh, been prophesied before. They're, they're written even in their own law. Amen. Uh, uh, that they hate me. Amen. He said uh, in verse 25, but this cometh to pass that the word might be fulfilled. What cometh to pass? The fact that they they, they, they hate both me and the Father. And mm. he said, uh, but this cometh to pass that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. Mm -hmm. They hated me without the cause, without a cause. Amen. Jesus said, really, they don't, they don't have a reason to hate me, but they, they hate me anyway. Amen. Because I stand for what? Righteousness. I stand for holiness. Yes. I, I stand representing the Father. Amen. He said, he said they, 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 they just hate me. And they hate me without a cause. But Jesus said, in spite of all that, nevertheless, regardless of what goes on, Jesus said in the 26th verse, he said, but when the comforter is come, oh God. whom I will send unto you from what? The Father, even the spirit of truth, who proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. And ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. Mm. Now watch this here, amen. Jesus puts biblical principle together because Jesus said in his word, amen, uh, 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 even to go back to their word, he said a thing must be established by what? Two or more witnesses, amen. So Jesus said, watch this, Jesus said, now uh, um, even though all this is going on and they going to hate you because they hated me, they going to persecute you because they persecuted me, he said, uh, but when the comforter come, uh, whom I will send unto you from the Father, he said, even the spirit of truth, which proceeded from the Father, he shall what? Testify of me. But to make uh, uh, the biblical principle stay together, in verse 27, well, in verse 26, Jesus said, who's going to testify of Jesus? The spirit. the spirit, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, where the second witness going to come from? In verse 27, he said to the disciples, and ye also <laughs> shall bear what? Witness. Amen. So, so you bearing witness and the Holy Spirit bearing witness makes what? A two. Amen. Because he said two or more shall what? Uh, 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 testify or, or, or make a thing true. Amen. So therefore he says in verse number 27 of the 15th chapter of John, as he talks to the disciples, he said, and ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. 
So here Jesus telling the disciples, amen, you're going to have two witnesses too. You're going to have the Holy Spirit that I send, the comforter, the spirit of truth, which is going to abide in you. And then because you had the privilege and the honor of being with me while I've been here on my uh, earthly ministry, amen. Mm -hmm. You'll be able to bear witness to the things what I've taught you, the things that you've seen me do, uh, the works that you've seen me do. So you're going to have what? Two witnesses as well, amen. You and the Holy Ghost, amen. amen. You and the Holy Spirit. So so Jesus is, is laying a foundation here in chapter 15 to prepare the disciples for what's to come. But at the same time, amen, Jesus can go back to uh, we can go back to chapter 14 when Jesus really began by simply tell, telling them in verse 1 of chapter 14, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Amen. Because he was preparing them for what, what was to come. Well, that, that ends uh, our book in our chapter 15 of the book of John. And, and we're going to move on into uh, the 16th chapter of John. Amen. In the 16th chapter uh, of John, the first verse, Jesus continues uh, with the disciples. Amen. He said, these things have I spoken unto you, that ye should not be offended. Amen. Jesus said, I don't want you to be offended by what I'm, what I'm telling you. It, it, it's preparation for what's going to happen. Amen. Oftentimes, we're too busy being, uh, what word I want to use? Amen. Amen. Um, of, well, offended. We, we're too busy being offended when somebody tells us something rather than seeing what they say and take it, digest it, and see how it can be used. Amen. Amen. But here Jesus is trying to what, prepare the disciples. He says in verse 1 of chapter 16 of the book of John, these things, what things? The things he's taught up to this point. He said, these things have I spoken unto you that ye should not be offended. He said, they shall put you out of the synagogue. All right, man. He, 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 now he, 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 he letting the disciples know. But ain't going to be the same when I leave, amen. He, he said, look at here. There are going to be church folk that don't want you in the church. All right. he, he said, they shall put you out of the synagogue. He, he was telling the disciples, they're not going to want you in the synagogue. They're not going to want you in the temple, amen. And the sad part is they think they're doing it on my behalf, but but they don't know me. They haven't been with me. Oh, you are the ones that I talk. You're the ones that been with me. So so uh, uh, the Holy Spirit is going to confirm this when it comes. So in verse number two, Jesus said, uh, I don't want y'all to get offended because I'm going to tell you about some other things that are going to happen when I leave. In verse two of chapter 16 of the book of John, he said, they shall put you out of the synagogues. Amen. Not going to want you there. Amen. He said, yeah, he said, yeah, the time coming that whosoever killed you will think that he do it, God serves. Amen. So, so uh, Jesus is, a, is, is knowing he's a warning man, and he knows he's going to be persecuted, and he's getting the disciples uh, uh, ready to understand that they're going to want to do the same things to you. Amen. They're going to want to put you out the synagogue. They're going to want to kill you in the name of God. Amen. Uh, thinking they're doing God a service. Thinking oh, they, they're doing what they do to you uh, because they serving God. But but so so Jesus said, I'm, I'm just, I just want to prepare you. In verse number three, he said, and these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. Oh, God. Amen. Amen. Glory. Have mercy. So, so Jesus is is he's really preparing the disciples. He's, he's really trying to uh, get them ready, amen. In verse number four of John, the 16th chapter, he goes on and he said, but these things have I told you that when the time shall come, ye may remember that I told you of them, amen. And these things I said not unto you uh, at the beginning because I was with you. Uh, Jesus said, I didn't tell you this in the beginning. I was with you. He said, but uh, I'm telling you now what's going to happen after I leave. Amen. They're going to want to put you out the synagogue. They're going to want to kill you in the name of God like they doing God a service. He said, but I uh, need you to understand that the things they do, they do simply because they know not me, nor do they know the Father. Amen. He said, so, but when these things have I, but these things have I told you that when the time should come, you may remember that I told you of them. So don't be surprised 
when it happens. Amen. Amen. Now, uh, on that note, there are some things in the word of God that God has been warning us as the people of God about. Amen. Uh, uh, and still yet, sometimes we act like we surprised when folks do things to us. Amen. But, but we shouldn't be surprised because if we read the book, amen, the Bible, amen, it what? It prepares us, amen. It tells us of some things that are going to happen. So, so we shouldn't be surprised, amen. Uh, uh, glory be to God. But nevertheless, Jesus is preparing the disciples. He's warning the disciples. He's letting them know what's going to happen when he departs, all right? So here we are in the 16th chapter of the book of John. In verse, verse number five, Jesus continues. He said, but now I go my way to him that sent me. And none of you asked me, whether goest thou? All right, so Jesus, okay. He said, so now uh, I, I'm about to depart and go back to the Father, amen. And then he said, but in verse number six, he said, but because I have said these things unto you, sorrow have filled your heart. And know what Jesus said? He said, because I've told you the things that I've told you. He said, now you're, you're, you're being, he said, your heart is a sorrow because I'm leaving. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He, he said, I understand. He said, oh, you're not even asking me the question that, that like you were asking me questions uh, uh, like Peter asked me and, 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 and I believe Jonas and I mean Judas and, and you know in the previous chapters how they began to ask Jesus questions and, and Jesus said you're not even asking me the questions now because your heart is, is, is at sorrow. Oh my. In verse number six he's well I'll read verse number five again in the 16th chapter of John. He said but now I go my way to him that sent me. I'm going back to the father. Jesus was saying he said, and none of you asked me uh, whether go is that. Amen. So, so you, you're not even caught up on the fact that where I'm going. You caught up on the fact, just the fact that I'm leaving. Amen. Because in verse number six, he says, but because I have said these things unto you, sorrow has filled your heart. But, but Jesus didn't leave it right there. Because in the next verse, verse seven, he says, nevertheless, Amen. Uh, 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 in spite of, regardless of, he said, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. Amen. Because he, 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 that's all I ever do is tell the it's truth. True. Amen. He, he said, so I tell you the truth. He said, it is expedient for you that I go away. It's to your advantage. This is what Jesus is saying. He yeah. said, it's to your advantage that I go away. It's to your advantage that I go to Calvary's cross. It's to your advantage Jesus. that I get mocked. It's to your advantage that I let them beat me. It's to your advantage that they put this, this that they go put this crown on my head. It's to your advantage. Mm. Amen. Ne nevertheless, this is what Jesus said. Nevertheless, in the seventh verse of the 16th chapter of John, he says, nevertheless, uh, uh, I tell you the truth. He said, it is expedient for you that I go away. It, it's for your benefit. It's for your advantage that I go away. He said, for if I go not away, amen, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Amen. In verse number eight, and when he has come, he will reprove the word, the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they believe not on me. Oh, wait, well, I'm, let me slow it down a little bit. He said, okay, he said, if I don't go away, if, if, if I don't leave, he said, you won't receive the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I know the disciples probably were saying, well, you know what, God, it, uh, Jesus, it'd be a good thing if you stay, because you'll be here with us and we'll be here with you. But but in that aspect, the, the disciples would, uh, um, what word I want to use, they haven't come to the, 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 yeah, they haven't come to the fullness of, of what Jesus is saying because Jesus is saying, I got to leave because uh, uh, you're going to be the ones to go and spread the gospel. You, you're going to go and do the greater in, 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 greater in ministry, amen. You're going to, 
to, to pass this word on to, to more people, so on and so forth. And, 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 and if you do that, amen, I, I can't be in all those places if, if I'm the flesh that Jesus is here. You know what I'm saying? If, if, if Jesus, the body of Jesus is here, he said, I can't be in all those locations because fleshly I can only be what? In one place. But, but when I send you the Holy Spirit, Ghost, the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth, the spirit of comfort, and it's in you, then I'm there what? With you, no matter where you go. Amen. So, so they hadn't come into the fullness of that just yet, the, the disciples hadn't. But Jesus is saying, hey, you know what? This is why it's expedient to your advantage that I do leave so that we can reach what? The world. Amen. Uh, not that we're just going to be in a community, but oh, we're going to branch out uh, uh, from from, from one nation to another, amen, simply because now my spirit abides in you and we are covering, somebody say, much ground. Much ground, amen. Amen, so, so in verse number seven of the 16th chapter of John, as Jesus is talking to the disciples, he says, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. It's to your advantage that I go away. He said, for if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, he said, I will send it what? Unto you. Amen. You, you have the Holy Ghost, which it'll, it'll be an indwelling thing. And Jesus goes on in, in, in verse number 80. He begins to, to give them the reason behind it. He said, when he is come, talking about the Holy Ghost, the, the comforter, the spirit of truth. He said, and when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin. All right, so now, 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 now the world going to get to see their sin. Oh, God. And, uh, they're going to be rebuked for their, their sin. Amen. He said, uh, uh, not only of the sin, he said, and of righteousness and of judgment. He said, of sin, uh, he gives us three things. He said, he said, the Holy Spirit, when it comes, the comfort of the spirit of truth, when it comes, he said, he will reprove the world of sin, mm -hmm. the world of righteousness, the world of judgment. Mm -hmm. And now Jesus gives us the reason why. He's of sin because they were believe, believe not on me. me. They, oh, because God. they didn't believe on Christ Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm. He's they're going to be re rebuked and reproved because uh, they didn't believe on me. Uh, he's of righteousness. He said, because I go to my father and you see me no more. But I have to leave what? Righteousness in the land. And that righteousness comes through living through what? The Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Amen. He said in verse 11, he said, of judgment. Because the prince of this world is judged. Oh, amen. God. He's another word, the prince of this world, which is the enemy. Amen. He, 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 he's going to be judged. Amen. amen. And he's judged by the Holy Ghost living in you because the Holy Ghost in you, uh, 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 how can I say this here? Because you have the Holy Ghost in you, you should be living a righteous life, a holy life. Amen. And, and sometimes uh, when you really look at things, the life you live, you don't have to say a word, but the life you live uh, will put other folks in judgment. Oh, Amen. God. Y yes, it will. Yes. Amen. If, if you're doing right and they're doing a wrong, amen, they, they ain't going to want to be around you. Amen. And if they uh, choose to be around you, it's because they're looking for change. Oh, amen. God. But, but, but let, let, let's go on. Amen. In verse 11 of the 16th chapter of the book of John, he says, of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. Amen. He, even the enemy itself has to be judged. He's going to be judged by the righteousness of God. Amen. Uh, uh, by the Holy Spirit, through uh, uh, righteousness through the Holy Spirit that lives in us, the body of Christ. Amen. In this particular, he's talking directly to the disciples. It's like the disciples are, 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 are giving a commission. Amen. Mm -hmm. and, and, the, and the commission is, is being very detailed, amen, mm -hmm. uh, about what's going to happen and, and, and what the Holy Ghost is going to do for you uh, when you receive it. Amen. This is what Jesus is telling the disciples. Mm -hmm. In verse number 12, he says, I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Oh, God. Amen. Jesus said, I, I got some, some more things I want to give to you, some more stuff. Oh, glory have mercy that I want to share with you. He said, but he said, but you, you can't bear 
right now. Amen. He said, but in, thir in the 13th verse, he gives them, a, he tells them they can't bear, but he, he in the 13th verse, he's going to tell them why. Amen. He said, in the in chapter 16 to 13 verse, he said, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. Amen. In other words, when the Holy Ghost comes, you'll be what? You'll be able to bear what the word of God says. You'll be able to, to take it. Amen. You'll be able to what? To eat the whole word, to, to eat the whole scroll. Amen. He said, how be it in verse 13 of the 16th chapter of John, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. Amen. Amen. For he shall not, speak, well, he not. shall not speak what of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Amen. He said, now, when the Holy Ghost come, amen, the Holy Spirit to come. Amen. He said, uh, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. Amen. What's truth, y'all? Christ saying, Jesus. Amen. amen. He said, I am the way, the life, and what? The, the truth. Amen. amen. And he told us in one verse that the Holy Spirit, when it comes, it won't testify about nothing else but who? Christ Jesus. Amen. Why? Because he's the truth. Amen. He said, I'll guide you into all truth. Verse 13. For he shall not speak of himself. Amen. The Holy Ghost ain't going to come speaking about himself. He's going to come speaking about Christ Jesus. He said, but whatsoever ye shall ye, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Amen. Now remember, Jesus also told the disciples that the Holy Ghost, the comforter, the spirit of truth, when he cometh, that he will bring things what back to the remembrance, the what? The things that they've been taught about Christ Jesus. Amen. So, so those are the things that the Holy Ghost what is going to hear, and those are the things that he's going to to speak what the word of God. The Holy Ghost ain't going to speak nothing else. It's only going to speak about Christ Jesus. It's only going to speak about the word of God. Amen. Uh, in verse number, uh, in the latter part of verse 13, he says, um, and he will show you things to come. Amen. He will show you things to come. Amen. The, the Holy Spirit will show you things to come. Amen. We shouldn't be caught off guard. He, 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 we're in tune with God. We're in tune with Christ. We're in tune with the Spirit of God. Uh, he's going to begin to what? show us things to come. Uh, he tells the disciples in the 14th, 14th verse of chapter 16, he said, he shall glorify me, speaking of what? The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost shall glorify me. Who is me? Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. For he shall receive a man and shall show it Unto you. Oh, Amen. He, the Holy Spirit going to get it from what? The throne room of God. Amen. Amen. And he's going to show it unto you. Amen. In the 15th verse of the same uh, book of John, the 16th chapter, he said, all things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take a man and shall show it unto you. Amen. Remember, the Father put all things what? into the hands of Christ Jesus. And Christ Jesus is simply saying that the Holy Ghost has the authority, uh, because I give it to him, to give those things unto you, okay. to show you those things. Amen. So whatever he shows you, it comes, what, from me, saying Christ Jesus. Amen. He goes on in the 15th verse of the 16th chapter of John. He's all things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I, Christ is saying, therefore said I, that he shall take a man and shall show it unto you. He said, a little while in verse 16, a little while and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while and ye shall see me because I go to the Father. Amen. So here Jesus is. Amen. He's telling the disciples, I'm going to be gone for a little while and you won't see me. He said, but yet again, a little while and you shall see me. He said, because I go to the Father. Remember, if I go to the Father, the Holy Ghost comes. The Holy Ghost comes. The Holy Ghost shares to you the things that what the Father has given unto me. So having the Holy Ghost is having me. Amen. In verse number 17 of the book of John, the 16th chapter, 
It says, then said some of his disciples among themselves. What is this that he said unto us? A little while and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while and ye shall see me. And because I go to the Father, amen. So the disciples are, 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 are wrestling with what Jesus has just said unto them. In the 13th verse, in the 18th verse, said they said, therefore, what is this that he, that he said? A little while. We cannot tell what he said. Now, Jesus knew that they were desirous to ask him and said unto them. So here they are. They began to talk among themselves, asking, what is this? Is he saying a, a little while and then he'll be gone and we won't see him. And then a little while we'll see him. And I, I, we're not understanding. But Jesus, being who he is, already knew what the thoughts that they had. So in verse number 19, Jesus addresses that. In the 19th verse of John, the 16th chapter, it said, now Jesus knew that they were what desirous to ask him. They wanted to ask him and said unto them, uh, do ye inquire among yourselves of that I said a little while and ye shall not see me and again a little while and ye shall see me? See me? As Jesus says in the 20th verse, verily, verily, truly, truly, I say unto you that ye shall weep and lament uh, but the world shall rejoice, and ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall return into joy. Amen. So, so Jesus is setting a foundation for them that in the fact that th why they're killing me, I'm going to the cross, they crucifying me. Oh man, they're gonna be elated about this. They, they, they found the one that say he's the Christ. Amen. But we got him, we crucified him, so on and so forth. And Jesus is telling the disciples, it's gonna be a sad, a sad time for you. You're gonna sorrow in that. He said, the world gonna be rejoicing. Amen. He said, but you're gonna be sorrowful about it. Amen. He goes on in verse number 21 of the 16th chapter of John. And he says, a woman when she is in travail has sorrow because her hour is come. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she rem remember it no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into the world. And ye now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again and your heart shall rejoice and your joy no man take it from you. Amen. Jesus said it's going to be just like a woman having uh, uh, in labor. Amen. Why? She's in, in labor and having the pain. Amen. She, she, she remembers that. Amen. Because what? It hurts. Amen. But but Jesus said, but soon as she delivers the child, amen, uh, uh, the, in, in a sense, the pain goes away because she sees what has been birthed into the world. And, and Jesus said uh, to the disciples, you, you're going to be like that. Amen. It's, it's going to be like a pain uh, 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 when you see me go through the things that I'm going to have to go through. But, but once you get the, the spirit of the Lord and the, and the Holy Ghost coming, the, the spirit of truth, the comforter comes. Amen. He's, he said, you're going to have a, a, such a joy. Amen. That, that the world not going to be able to, to take that away from you. In verse number 22 of the 16th chapter of John, he said that ye now therefore have sorrow. Uh, he's talking to the disciple he, because, you know, I'm going to leave. I'm preparing you for my departure. He said, and ye now therefore have sorrow. He said, but I will see you again and your heart shall rejoice and your joy no man taketh from you. Amen. He goes on in the 23rd verse of the 16th chapter. And in that day, ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you whatsoever. Uh, uh, ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Here, to, here there too, have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask and ye shall receive, that your joy may be fulfilled. In verse number 25, he said, These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs, but the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall show you plainly of the Father. Amen. So Jesus said, even the things I've said to you now have been like a proverb. They've been like a, a parable. He said, but there's going to come a time where I'm not going to speak to you like that anymore. I'm going to speak to you very plainly. Uh, but that time is, uh, you won't be able to receive that time until what? The, the comforter come. Amen. Because the comforter will make it clear and plain as to what I'm saying to you. You'll be able to, to go back when I'm gone 
and look at the teachings that I've taught you, the words that I've shared with you, and, they, and they're going to become live unto you. You you will have an understanding, amen, of, of the things that I, I have for you, the things that I prepare for you, the things that I have for you to do, the will of God. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. He goes on. Amen. We got a few more minutes here. Amen. In verse 27, uh, he says, for the Father himself loveth you. Let me go back a little bit. I'm going to go to verse 25 of the 16th chapter of John. He said, these things I have spoken unto you in Proverbs. He said, but the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall show you plainly of the Father. Amen. I'm not going to speak to you in parables no more. I'm just going to speak plainly. This is what Jesus is saying. That, that day is coming. That time is coming. He said, at that day ye shall ask in my, in my name. And I say not unto you, I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you. For the Father himself loveth you because he have loved, because ye have loved me and have believed that I came out from God. I came forth from the Father and have come into the world. Again, I leave the world and go to the Father. Amen. So, so he's saying to the disciples, there's going to come, a, he's, I'm talking to you in Proverbs and you might not understand me. He said, well, but there's going to come a time and it's coming real soon that I'm going to talk to you plainly. He said, because when I'm going back to the Father. He said, because you have loved me, the Father loveth you. And, and the Father is going to share those things with you that he's given unto me. Amen. He said, so I, I, I got to leave the world and go to the Father. In verse number 29 of the 16th chapter of John, he said, it says, his disciples said unto him, Lo, now speakest thou plainly, and speakest no problems. Now we, now are we sure that thou knowest all things, and needest not that any man should ask thee. By this we believe that thou camest forth from God. So here the disciples, they'll respond to what Jesus has just said to them. His, the disciples said unto him, Lo, now speakest thou plainly, and speakest no problems. He said, now we are sure that thou knowest all things, and needest not that any man should ask thee. By this we believe that thou camest forth from God. Now, uh, let's put this in a, in, a, in a different perspective as well. Remember, here they are, the disciples, when Jesus started talking, amen. They started wondering, hey, what is he saying? You know what I'm saying? How, what do you mean he's going to go away? So when Jesus said in verse 19, uh, now Jesus knew that they were desirous to ask him and said unto him. In other words, Jesus already knew what they was thinking, what the thought was. He went ahead on and started expounding on the word of God. Now when he gets down to this part in 29 and he begins to say, okay, there's going to come a time where I'm just going to give it to you plainly. The disciples are saying, man, hey, uh, he, he knows the thoughts even before we ask. Amen. And, and even the things that we stumbled on, he made them clear unto us. And they saying, hey, we, we know that he coming from God and no man needs to uh, um, uh, ask. Well, according to the, script, the scripture in 30, he said, now we are sure that thou knowest all things and needest not that any man should ask thee. In other words, they saying, he already know what we're thinking. Amen. He ain't even got to ask us what we're thinking. Amen. He, he, he already know it. And they said, so we, we believe that you are the Christ. Because in the latter part of verse number 30, they said, by this we believe that thou camest forth from God. Man, you, 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 you giving us answers before we even ask the question. Even though we didn't say it out, you knew exactly what we were going to ask. And he said, by this we believe that thou camest forth from God. And in verse number 31, Jesus uh, gives them another answer. Jesus said in verse 31 of the 16th chapter of John, it said, Jesus answered them, do ye now believe? He said, behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Excuse me. Jesus said to the disciples in verse 31, he said, do ye now believe? Amen. He tells them, he said, look, 
There's going to come a time that the hour is going to come. He said, it now is. He said, you guys are going to be scattered. You're going to be scattered in all the different places. When you know, Because after they take me, they're going to be after you next. Amen. You're going to be scattered. Amen. He said, uh, you're going to think I'm alone, but I'm not alone because I'm with the Father. Amen. And he says, he goes on in the 33rd verse. He tells them, uh, he said, but I'm going to leave you my peace. I'm going to give you my peace. He said, in this world, you're going to have tribulation, but, but don't think about the tribulation. Just know you still got peace in Christ Jesus. And he said, uh, even though in this world, you're going to have tribulation, he said, but be of good cheer. Amen. Don't, don't get your countenance down. Amen. He said, because I have overcome the world. Amen. I, I've overcome the world. Uh, the world can't hold us back. They can't hold us down. We are victorious, what? In Christ Jesus. And Christ is telling them, I have overcome this world. I'm, I'm victorious over the world. And, and because I'm victorious over the world, I want you to be a good cheer because what? You are victorious as well. As long as the branch abides in the vine, and the vine is Christ Jesus. Amen. Well, saints, we're going to stop that tonight. Amen. Uh, and to, we've made it to chapter 17 of John, the book of John. Amen. And next week, amen, be the Lord's will. We shall continue in the book of John. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Once again, it's been a privilege, amen, and an honor to share with you the word of God. Amen. I pray that the word of God has uh, uh, blessed you tremendously. Amen. And if we just eat it, live it. Amen. It will enrich our lives. Um, that much more. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. Well, we're going to give you a few minutes if there are anything you want to send to First Lady by I am. Amen. It's the message or chat. Uh, a chat. This is sometimes to, to do it. Amen. But I'm I'm grateful and I'm thankful and I'm honored. Amen. To, to have been able to share the word of God with you. Amen. God is doing a wonderful and mighty thing. Amen. I'm, just want to encourage you to let God continue to do a wonderful thing in you. Amen. Uh, he's awesome. Amen. He's not just mighty. He's awesome. Amen. He's everlasting. Amen. By the gift of his spirit through his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. He, he's simply asking us as the saints of God. Step up to the plate. Amen. It's time that we truly live in the will. Amen. Well, first lady, is there anything tonight? I have no comments. No Amen. Emails, no Amen. texts. All right, then. Amen. Well, there's nothing from uh, the technical side. Amen. Uh, I'll say thanks. Let's, let's keep each other lifted up in prayer. Uh, those that have experienced lost one, have experienced the loss of loved ones, let's keep them lifted up. Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, those that are that are traveling, amen. We plead the blood of Christ over their lives that they will have traveling mercy through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Well, does nothing else, saints. Uh, let us pray. God, we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. We thank you, God, for allowing us, God, to share in this world. We thank you, God, for being our Father, the Creator, and the Maker of all things. We thank you for salvation that comes through your Son, Jesus. Christ. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for uh, going to Calvary's cross. We thank you for redeeming us and reconciling us back unto the Father. And we thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, God, we pray that the Holy Spirit that dwells in us, God, that we, your people, will give it, uh, uh, so we will submit to it, let it have its way in our lives, that we may fulfill the word of God in our lives, fulfill the will of God in our lives. Now, God, those, God, that have lost loved ones over this week, God, we're asking now, God, uh, that you will cradle them in your love, God, amen. We ask that you will comfort their hearts, God, by your spirit, God. We're asking now, God, that, that you use us, God, to be encouragement, God, to be uh, uh, something that they can lean on, God. Uh, uh, help us to keep them propped up in Christ Jesus. Now, God, I pray for all the saints all over, God, that the blood covering of Christ will be over their lives, God. I pray, God, that we be a people of submission, God, unto your will, your word, and your way. And may in all things, God, we be found to be pleasing in your sight. 
We love you, Lord. We appreciate you, and we thank you for it all. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen, 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 amen. and amen. Well, saints, once again, it's been a privilege, it's been an honor, and it's been a pleasure to share with you in the word of God. And until we meet up again, as always, be thankful, be blessed, and be in God. Thank you.